Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm John and today we are going to install the Super Trap exhaust from Man in the Box on the Honda Monkey. So I'm pretty well versed in exhaust installs by now, so I'm not expecting anything too difficult, but we'd like to get it on the bike, show you how it goes on, let you know of any difficulties or anything different than the normal exhaust install, and basically uh, start it up at the end, so make sure you stick around to the end. So we give it a little start up, give it a little rev up, see how it sounds, and then the next videos we're going to go ride, going to review it, and then we're going to go thrash test it at the track. So, hope you guys uh, enjoy this process of the install. We're gonna check back in after it, and I'm gonna let you know what I think. I think I uh, finally found the Honda Monkey exhaust that sounds different than the others. What do you guys think? It's hard to say at idle, but when you rev it up, it's got this vintage sort of, wow, it's, it's got a different um, growl to it, doesn't it? So uh, based on the startup and um, just that little test right there, I'm thinking this exhaust might sound a little bit different out there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how it sounds on the road. So a couple of notes on the installation. The hardest part of the install was definitely putting all the discs onto the end cap. Um, while not difficult, it was just kind of hard to get the screws to go through the six layers of metal discs. So uh, I tried it a couple of ways and the easiest way I think is to have them screw the screws in on the end cap and all the discs through them and then put the whole assembly on the end cap. 
So you see I've used the anti-seize compound pretty liberally and uh, it is kind of messy, but I would definitely recommend using that. And you see, I thought it was such a good idea. I used it on the head studs and even on the heat shield mount bolts too, because anytime you have exhaust and screws and um, you know, the expansion and contraction from heating and cooling, uh, it dissimilar metals maybe, it all makes those things kind of hard to get out sometime in the future. So anti seize compounds, a nice touch to have in that kit. It's not something many of the other exhausts came with, but it's probably a good idea. Aside from that, the other uh, hitch that I ran into was how I mounted the clamp. Um, I would definitely suggest mounting that clamp to where the screw is on the bottom of the pipe. So you'll probably see there's a little screw uh, cap visible above the heat shield and that's gonna drive me nuts. But I really don't feel like taking the whole thing back apart this late in the night. So I'm just gonna leave it until it drives me crazy enough to where I feel like changing it or I just have to take everything off because I'm doing a repair. Like I will be probably doing with the piston ring soon. So it's not gonna bother me enough probably until then. But yeah, just make sure you put the clamp on the bottom side of the pipe, not on the top side. I put mine on the, the top side and I clocked it around to the back, figuring that I'd hide it totally, but that threaded part still shows out of the top of the heat shield. So other than that, pretty standard fare install. It's uh, one of the few exhausts that has only one mounting bolt to the frame. Uh, all the other exhausts have uh, some sort of mounting system or um, you know like the Terminoni has a, that I thought that was the easiest before this where it was um, two bolts they were perfectly aligned and welded to the can um, the TB and Yoshi pipes have like a separate bracket that needs to be mounted to them and then to the chassis so that adds another step into the process but this is uh, pretty simple it's got the welded bracket plate on the uh, can and that just goes into the frame with a rubber bushing to isolate it from vibration and stuff so uh, fairly easy job and um, so far I'm kind of excited about this because it sounds sounds a little bit different it's got a different tone to it so we I think we have a contender in uh, the the monkey exhaust that sounds different than the rest category which is good. So uh, maybe the guys at Man in the Box are onto something here and this is why they wanted to offer this one exclusively because they knew that it was um, a little bit different sounding and you know this is maybe the exhaust that a lot of people will be looking for. So other than that, um, I don't think I have anything else to add. So as always, I'm getting a little weird from the uh, carbon monoxide in my shop. So I'm going to cut myself off here before I ramble on all night, which I tend to do. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the installation process. And I'm going to put links down into the description where you guys can pick one of these exhausts up for yourself. So with that, I'm going to ride a little bit, see how the exhaust is, make sure that it doesn't fall off for, for some reason, which I don't think it will. And then I'm going to do a ride review. But this time I think I might switch it up and I might do the ultimate sound test first and then the ride review after so I can kind of talk about how it sounded in the ultimate sound test. See, um, basically get my thoughts from the ultimate sound test into the ride review. So we're going to try that this time. So until then, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.